Often and again, through fate's weaving, man and woman usher a child into the world. They clothe him in fair colours and cherish him, teach him as the seasons turn until his young bones strengthen, his limbs lengthen. So his father and mother first carry him, then walk with him and lavish gifts and garments upon him. Only fate knows how the years will treat the growing child. One will die young, bringing grief to his family. The wolf, the grey heath stalker, will gorge on him, and his mother will mourn. Man cannot control his fortune. Hunger will devour one, storm dismast another. One will be spear slain, one hacked down in battle. One will live without ever seeing light. He will grope about. One with feeble sinews, a crippled foot, will curse at the pain, ranked and resentful he will fret at fate. One will drop, wingless from the high tree in the wood. Look how he flies still, dives through the air until the tree's arms no longer surround him. Then sadly he slumps by the trunk, robbed of life. He falls to earth and his soul flies from him. One must chance remote roads to carry his own food and leave dew tracks amongst the foreign in a land of danger. He will find few prepared to host him, an exile shunned for his misfortune. One will swing from the tall gallows, sway in death till his blood-masked body, casket of his soul has been violated. There the raven pecks out his eyes, the dark bird rips his corpse to pieces, and he cannot thwart the vile thief's intrusion. For his life is ended, flayed, forsaken. Pale on the tree he endures his fate, shrouded in a swirling death mist. Men spit at his name. One will suffer agony on the pyre. Seething fire will swallow the fated man. Death claims him quickly there, the cruel red flames. That woman keens who sees those tongues swathe her son. The sword's edge will shear the life of one, at the mead bench, in anger soaked in wine. Too hasty were his words, one will not stay the cupbearer's hand, and he becomes befuddled. At the feast, his mind cannot control his tongue, and most meanly, he forfeits his life. He suffers death, severance from joys, and men call him a self-slayer. They deplore that drunkard, maddened by mead. One, by the fate's weaving, will overcome all the hardships that bedeviled his youth, and he will know happiness in old age. He will welcome the rising sun and receive riches, treasures and the mead cup from his people, as much as any can own in this life. So the Norns weave his lot, to each man on this middle earth ordaining fate, for one happiness, hardship for another, for one a young man's rapture, Success for another in savage swordplay. For one, strength in wrestling, skill in throwing and shooting. Fortune for one at dice, a devious mind for taffle. Some scribes become wise. 
The goldsmith fashions a marvellous gift for one. Many times that man tempers and decorates for the great king, who grants him broad acres in return. He readily accepts them. One will delight a gathering, gladden men at the mead bench sitting at their ale. The joy of the drinkers is redoubled there. One will tame the wild bird, the hawk on the fist, until the falcon becomes gentle. He puts jesses on it and feeds it still in fetters. He weakens the swift peregrine, so proud of its plumage, with mere morsels until that bird, servile in garments and in flight, obeys and is trained to the hand of the young warrior. One will settle beside his harp at his lord's feet, be handed treasures and always quick to play the strings with his pick. Melodies he hears and harmonies, harper, heart's desire. wondrous ways the Norns weave the golden threads of work. They shape the skills of all on this Middle-earth, ordain the fate of every man and woman in this world. <laughs> 